Hi guys, it's Mina. Welcome back to another evening episode, a nighttime pouring, if you will. Um, it's much warmer than the other night. <laughs> Gale is blowing, but it's Santa Ana winds now, so they're nice and warm, and it's actually been a lovely day. So, <laughs> we are going to play tonight and uh, maybe experiment with some different things. You guys just saw we did Reckless Abandon, that amazing starburst pour inspired from Molly from Molly's Artistry. And with that one, I had my paint mixed with just water and the paint and just a teaspoon, like a teaspoon of GAC 800. And it really got me thinking about that thinner consistency and how things gonna, are moving around and some of the things that I've been wanting to play with lately, a couple of different swipe techniques, maybe some smearing. Uh, I don't know. So my paint is thinner than usual tonight. It is still mixed with Liquitex Gloss Medium and Floetrol, but there's a lot more water in everything. So we're, we're going to see what happens. I also have white as my base coat background color. That is a little thinner than all of this. So we'll see what happens. You know, anything can happen. <laughs> Let me show you my colors, but I'll show you this first. This is a 24 by 36 inch gallery wrap canvas from Artist Loft. I have taped the back and put my push pins in. So it's been an interesting week. Um, my birthday was January 6th, which was a really interesting day uh, in history. <laughs> it started out actually really awesome. We did a premiere and a whole bunch of you guys were there and it was fun and it was awesome. And then I turned on YouTube and started watching the news and it was just kind of glued to <laughs> the news for a very long time. And it wasn't the best birthday on record. HOA kept trying to get me to come up and, you know, be with everybody and the kids. And I was just kind of like, I have to watch this. So it, I wasn't in a really good mood. And then uh, HOA called me and he said, there's, there's something up here for you. And I went upstairs and there was this beautiful vase of tulips that was from the Massey boys, Lee and Jeremy Massey. And I was just, it was so sweet of them. You know, they were so beautiful this gorgeous vase with this beautiful three different colors of tulips, purple ones and pink ones and yellow ones, just gorgeous. And it just, it made me so happy. Just that, you know, I don't know, it was so sweet. And they're the nicest guys. Thank you so much, Lee and Jeremy, you guys are awesome. And it just, they really made my day. And, uh, oops, there that goes up. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, but the tulips really made my day. And then, uh, you know, how tulips, you clean them up after a few days and you change the water and trim the stems and you put them back in. And I was doing that and I was looking at one of them and I'll show you guys a picture because I took a couple of pictures, but it's this beautiful darker purple sort of the petals. And then inside of it was sort of this white silver color with like this streak of a darker color. And then the, the gold colored pollen, it was just, it was so pretty in there. And I was just really inspired by those colors. And I thought I want to do a pour with them. So I was thinking about what I want to do and I'm still not entirely positive, but I kind of know what I want to do. So <laughs> I'll show you my colors real quick and then we're gonna, ooh, sounds like the coyotes are out. Okay, so in Well of Souls, that one with the five straight pores, we used a Artist Loft Quinacridone Blue Violet and that was actually much pinker than I had anticipated. And I was looking through my paints, looking for something tonight and I found this one, which is Liquitex Quinacridone Blue Violet. And this is definitely more bluey than that other one was. That one was sort of like a cherry color. And this is definitely very close to the, like a permanent violet from Golden's Permanent Violet Dark. So this is a beautiful color. I'm very excited to use this one. This is the Liquitex Professional Series. Um, just a quick note about that. That tube, the two ounce tube of the Artist Loft <laughs> Quinacridone Blue Violet, I found it at Michael's for like 10 bucks. I went looking for it on Amazon and I found a tube for two ounces for $30. And I was like a little shocked, honestly. So, you know, when you're looking for something, you're looking for something specific, shop around, check different places. Cause after I saw that on my Amazon, I went back to the Michaels website and it was still $10. So, you know, and then also on that $10 note, so that's $10 for two ounces. If you buy a eight ounce tub of Goldens, you know, it comes out to a lot less than, than uh, five bucks an ounce, you know what I'm saying? You might pay, you know, 20 bucks, but you'll get eight ounces of really, really good paint versus with that Artist Loft one, it was two ounces for $10. So, you know, shop around, check your, and compare, because you, you might find some really good deals. And then if you have coupons for Michaels, is always awesome too. So, okay, so Liquitex Quinacridone Blue Violet. This one is uh, 
<laughs> one of Lee's favorite colors. This is Amsterdam bluish gray. And he's been trying to get me to play with this one for a while. And I've been very resistant and said some mean things like it looked like mud in a tube. So I'm going to try it because of the lovely tulips that you, you guys sent me. <laughs> I'm going to use your grayish blue. Okay, this one is, okay, some of these are, are leftovers from other pores. This one I'm pretty sure is Payne's Gray, um, which is Golden's. Very, very slight mound on a mound and then disappears pretty quick. So, and then this one I think is Prussian Blue. And I think this has some of that iridescent medium in it because it's very, very sparkly. Either that or this is drips. So I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what that is, but it's a very pretty color. And then this last one here is Amsterdam Ultramarine Violet. And again, pretty thin, leaving a little mound and then sinking pretty much. Okay, I also have leftover Artist Loft Silver. That's also from well of souls yeah and my 24 karat gold and then i have just a teeny tiny bit of leftover golden's green gold in case i want to do something specific excuse me sir go away thank you okay so i also have white there's three cups of this and they are all, all the same consistency because i've been pouring them back and forth into each other nice and thin hello gail you can blow all you want tonight it's not gonna make a difference <laughs> Okay, hey, go away. Go on. Get out of here. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm still undecided if I want to pour layer a cup or if I want to, I think I'm just going to pour ribbons. So first thing I'm going to do is put down a bit of a base coat. <clears throat> this I will tell you about in a minute. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you about it now. My uh, daughter is a freshman in high school and she just finished off her English for this semester and had her final exam and we were talking about what she was studying and they've been studying poetry for the last little bit of this part of the season and it's actually been really interesting to talk with her about some of this stuff and some of these poems were just beautiful and they were <laughs> okay well, let me read it to you since i've been telling you about it okay <clears throat> this one is called to the virgins to make much of time by robert herrick Gather ye rosebuds while ye may, old time is still a-flying, and this same flower that smiles today, tomorrow will be dying. The glorious lamp of heaven, the sun, the higher he's a-getting, the sooner will his race be run, and nearer he's to setting. That age is best which at the, is the first, when youth and blood are warmer, but being spent the worse, and worst, times still succeed the former. Then be not coy, but use your time, and while ye may, go marry. For having lost but once your prime, you may forever tarry. So that's a <laughs> gather you rosebuds while you may. It was a, a, a theme that they were talking about. And what does that mean and why and how is it important and what do you need? What is that, you know? So it was really interesting to talk with them about that. And I don't know, it was just very cool. And I was actually happy, like, wow, this is cool. Okay, so we're gonna put down this white. And I think I am going to put it around the edges and just cover the whole thing. Okay, so we do have kind of a big thick pillow in the center and that's just fine. I am going to put it around the rest of it too because I want a base coat on everything. I'm just going to pour some colors down on this and we're going to tilt and I might swipe. Okay, the first one I want to go with is this beautiful quinacridone blue violet. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to put some silver next to that.
And some of our ultramarine blue. Oh no, sorry, this is Prussian blue, I think. Ultramarine violet. It's another grayish blue. <laughs> and then we're going to put some panes on top of that. So that's pretty cool. There's a lot of paint on there. That's okay. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of paint on here. Because I want that to be able to move. I wanna tilt it around and do things. Stop for a second. I like this, but I want more of that color on there. So I'm gonna put some more on now, where I want it. Tilt this some more. kind of going back and forth with it because I want to stretch it out and spread it out. Also want to get some extra paint off of there. Like right now that's good. Let me go back to the other side again. Did I tell you what was in the white? I never know. <laughs> the white was sort of a whole bunch of different whites that I had that uh, satin enamel in there and Amsterdam in there and probably some acrylic in there. Um, but yeah, it was sort of a, <laughs> a mishmash of different whites all put together. But that's okay, you know, I mean, it's cool. This is, and the satin enamel is, is doing what it does where it sort of eats the other colors a little bit, which is what I wanted it to do. 
And I think I do want to smear it, definitely. I love this though, see that cool, that line is awesome. Sort of a marbling effect almost. Keep touching it. <laughs> kind of cool though. All right, let's take our big, huge palette knife and uh, put some of our white on the back of it. Let's see how this goes. Smear through some of these areas. Go on that side. Mm -hmm. Let's do a test smear. Where should we smear? Should we smear over here? Let's do it over here. Okay. So I'm just going to take this. Make sure my hand's not gripping, which it is. And we're going to go over here. Might have been too much paint on there. I'm going to swipe it one more time. I see some cells under there. I don't know if I like that, though. Kind of went gray. Hmm. No, I don't like that. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Let's see if we can't put some more color on top of that, and then we'll tilt it a little bit. This is one of the reasons it looks kind of gray. Lovely blue-gray color. I'm not sure I like it very much. I don't like that. <laughs> I think we need more paint. Okay. Mm, let's just layer a cup. We'll do a, a pour. Yeah. Okay. I definitely want some of the quinacridone. Okay, I'm just gonna pour this on top of this. We're gonna do like a ribbon. Ready? Okay, here we go. That's really pretty, I like that a lot. There's still a little bit more paint in here. Let's go over here. Alright, now we're gonna tilt that. Oh, the cell's popping up. 
Okay. Get rid of some of that at the bottom. Which looks like it might be starting to set up anyhow, so that's good. Get it off. Just stretch this out nice and thin. Back in the other direction now. I like all those cells in there that are happening. I don't like that edge, though. what's happening up there. I'm not so crazy about this. So let's see if we can't stretch this and get some cool cells coming up. Okay, there's some really cool things happening in here. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a bam then. That's better. I'll just tilt that a little bit to incorporate it. Now it looks like it belongs. Isn't that cool? <laughs> okay, that's looking pretty neat. So, you know, I didn't really have a clear direction of what I exactly wanted to do with this. I think how this is celled up is really awesome. That's because of the, the ribbon pour that we did there, the, just the straight pour and stretched it out and it got all those groovy cells. And I did move it around. I didn't keep bringing it back to center. So oh, that's why they're a little wonky. But they're pretty cool though. I love what's happening over here. This is really neat. I do love that color. That quinacridone is beautiful. This is kind of nifty. So this was thinner white paint or thinner paint. And then my white had satin enamels and Amsterdam in it and was pretty thin. So. I don't know, this turned out kind of neat. I'm almost tempted to pour another straight cup and do it again and not tilt it so much so we actually get the cells. All right. Well, let's give it a quick torch, even though the wind is blowing everything, because I'm not going to tilt it out anymore. All right. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'll show you guys when it's dry. Thanks for hanging out with me and playing and, you know, 
Sometimes you just gotta have fun and experiment with stuff and see what happens. So, this was awesome. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. I'll show you when it's dry. Okay. Sorry guys. Just, I'm not loving what's happening on there. And I, I think if we pour another cup and stretch that out, I think it'll work out a lot better. We'll get some of those cool cells happening and uh, be pretty neat. So, okay. So I've just layered my cup again with the same colors. And we're just gonna come in. You ready, darling? I'm gonna start over here and kind of go around. Okay, here we go. That's cool. Just give that a second. I'm just already starting to sell up over there. That's good. Just stretch it out just a little bit. I'm gonna turn the canvas. Stick off and open up. Yeah, I already like that a lot better. <laughs> okay. We're going to torch that one more time. And then we really will be finished. I really like this now. That's beautiful to me. This is pretty. This is cool. I like how there's that quinacridone blue violet in the background. I'm a little sorry we lost all of this stuff, but they were kind of wonky. Sorry about that. I like this better though. I don't know, I didn't like the other one very much. So, I will show you guys when it's dry and I just dripped in it, that's awesome. Flying drip. Okay. okay. <laughs> but these are cool. I like the cells that are popping up in here. Probably gonna get a few more happening. Hopefully, we'll see. things out. It's okay. It's good. Okay. <laughs> I'll show you guys when it's dry. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> this is actually a few weeks later and this is totally dry now. Um, so this piece is really interesting to me because it's not anything that had like a very serious direction in mind or a specific idea or even a specific technique. And um, the things that I like about this piece are seeing how the colors blended and played together the most. Um, that really pretty dark Liquitex Permanent Blue Violet changed a lot. In some places it's really dark and in some places it blended a lot. And uh, it's different, you know, there's, there's also little bits of the 
ultramarine violet in there. There's some of that grayish blue in there. I really like the silver. Like I really like this part a lot. I really like the white here, how it's spread out with that gold band through it. I like how the purple looks. Like right here is really cool where you see that permanent violet next to that Payne's gray, next to the white. You know, it's, it's a little different. Well, it's a lot different. <laughs> But, you know, I think that the cool thing about this and the important message in this whole video is, you know, to try things and experiment and, you know, play with your paints a little bit. It doesn't matter if it's always perfect or if it doesn't come out amazing. You're learning. And, you know, for me, it was really interesting, like, seeing over here where it looks a lot more magenta is why did it do that? What happened there? You know, I think it's the, the permanent blue-violet mixed with the gold. Or maybe mixed with some of the silver. The gray, grayish blue is on the side of that. And I like that better than I did before. Um, there's parts of the grayish blue in here. With the, the Prussian blue. And the, some of that purple that's coming through. That's pretty neat. I really like this part. I really like the colors in this section. Or This is probably my favorite part. Where there's the gold cells coming up. And there's some silver in there through the Prussian blue and the Payne's gray. I do like the cells, and the cells come from that straight ribbon pour that we did. Sorry, it's nighttime. <laughs> I missed my window during the day. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's interesting. It's, it's interesting seeing what happens and seeing how much things change when they stretch and when they're dry. That permanent blue-violet looks a lot more pinkish with the Floetrol mixed in it, but then when it dries, it actually does dry darker blue-violet, like in here which is pretty cool. The grayish blue is actually a very, very pretty color when it's dry. I like it a lot better now seeing it next to the Prussian blue and the Payne's gray. I like it with the purple, you know. So go out and play with your paints. It doesn't always have to end up in a perfect piece, but you learn a lot from working with them and from seeing how they react to other things. So I realize this whole video is a little bit different. <laughs> with the poetry and the tulips and all that and but life is life is strange sometimes <laughs> we do the best we can anyways thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and bearing with me till this point i hope you've enjoyed this at least and maybe figured out some different ways to do some things and i don't know you know but i appreciate you all i appreciate you being here thank you so much and i will see you for the next one have a wonderful day Thank you.